Alaska. Beautiful and brutally spectacular. 586,000 treacherous square miles with less than 20 hospitals. The people that live, work, and play here dare to go where few have gone before. This is absolute wilderness where I don't think man has ever walked. The rugged terrain, as breathtaking as it is unforgiving. Raw Alaska. The Southeast Gulf of Alaska, raw and unforgiving. It accounts for 80% of the wild salmon caught in North America. Much of it comes from right here, a tight-knit community of 1,800. During certain parts of the year, bald eagles outnumber people by more than two to one. Many of the local fishermen are like family. Losing one of their own in a 70-foot swell can devastate an entire town. But it's a risk that goes with the territory. Danger exists, and the threat of life and death is always with you. Even on a calm day, the frigid water of the Gulf can be treacherous. And today, the prospector is in deep trouble. In a freak accident, the water-filled slush tank that stores the salmon gave way below deck, and now the boat is going down. Yeah, Bruce Bauer, skipper of the Sundowner, gets the emergency call from half a mile away. Heading that way. Yeah. I could hear the voice of someone saying, we're taking on water here, we got a problem. Captain Bruce races to the scene. The prospector is going down, fast. He's gone. If you're in the water, in the Gulf, and you're not gonna be immediately rescued, and you're not in a survival suit, you, you need to start talking to God. Every year, more than a dozen fishermen are lost at sea in the Alaskan Gulf, an average of one a month. Once you get spanked by the ocean, you respect it more. If you continue to get spanked, you're not doing something right, and one of those spankings will be your last. Today, the prospector and its crew are fighting for their lives. She's dead in the water and radios for a tow. Someone needs help. No, no matter who or where you are or what you're doing, you drop everything and you go help them. I mean, that's the bottom line. The Sundowner, with Captain Bruce Bauer in charge, is the only other boat in the vicinity and races to the rescue. It's only been a few minutes since the prospector made its first call for help. But suddenly, before their eyes, the boat is headed straight for the bottom. Boat sinking? Yeah. Holy shoot. With its crew still on board. He's gone. You always think, oh yeah, we heard boats go down fast, and you see it, and you go, oh my god, it went down so fast. Is everybody off? With the water under 50 degrees, hypothermia will start to set in immediately. You could be in the water five minutes and die of hypothermia up here in the Gulf, even when the water's only 48 degrees. The sundowner is the first on the scene, and there's not a moment to spare. They have to haul in their gear. Pull your leaders on board. Give me a line over here. Hundreds of feet of lines and hooks as they go in for the rescue. Hey, let's go get him. Suddenly, Bruce gets another shock when he recognizes one of the crew on the doomed boat. 29-year-old Aaron Nash, who only a few years earlier lost his brother Olin to a storm at sea. I couldn't go back to Donnie, Aaron's dad, and say, God, you know, he lost another one? Uh-uh, uh-uh. I had to get that boy bored. Is everybody off? Two of you, OK? The two men are working to get clear of the boat. The biggest problem is, of course, is, is that the guys are right next to the boat. And if the boat goes down fast like that, it creates a cavitational suck. And the cavitational suck can literally suck you under the water with the boat. Thankfully, they clear the boat. 
Now, they're close enough where the crew can almost grab them. But they are still not out of danger. The 50-ton sundowner is slowly rocking. boy. But bigger waves are on the way. And if they're not careful, they could get crushed under the sundowner. You all right? OK, we're going to get them. But let's not kill them with our boat coming down and hitting them on a wave. Aaron's dad's fishing about six miles away, and he's on the radio. He knows his son's in the water now, and he's talking to me. Yeah, we got both persons on board now, so we're just standing by. Everybody's safe here, everybody. And the minute I got him on board, I called Donnie. I said, Donnie, I got, the, I got him. He's on board. We're all safe. And not a moment too soon. Holy cow, that was fast. That was way fast. That was way fast. fast. It's all right. Everybody's fine. Everybody's good. The men are not injured. But Aaron knows just how close he came to going down with the ship. I looked back, and all the rigging from the boat's coming down because the boat is sinking that way. And I look up, and it's like right coming down on me. And I just I moved just in time, and I went. Stroosh. Boats are replaceable. We get another boat. We can't get another Aaron. That's one of the things I do honestly think of when I look at him. It's like he pulled us out of the water. Two men were saved. But it doesn't always turn out that way. In their home port of Haines, Alaska, a memorial recalls Aaron's brother and the others who weren't so fortunate. You think about them all the time. You have to. If you don't think about them, what they did was worth nothing. And if you don't think about them, you could be the next.